If you look at the final four teams that made the conference finals, you will notice that one does not look like the other. The Indiana Pacers have had the most luck in the playoffs this year. And while watching a TNT pregame show, Draymond Green called the Knicks a fluke team this year. Wait, why, why does Knicks fans think I hate the Knicks, though? Why do they? Because you did say you didn't like New York. No, no, I, no, that's a lie. But did, I thought you no, said I told the truth team. about the team. Uh, well, uh, and the truth about the team was man, it's a fluke. <laughs> that's why they don't like you. That's why. <laughs> but I'm just saying that their good the season that they've had last in the last whatever, you said is a fluke. This year is what you said. He said yeah, this year's yeah, team is a uh, fluke. Okay, oh, so here, here's okay. what I said. Okay. A fluke. Okay. I said this team, they're winning right now. And it could be, a, I think it's a setup like the Atlanta Hawks in 2021. Right. And if you remember back to maybe 2016, 17, the Portland Trailblazers paid all of those guys <laughs> because they had that one good year and then they got jammed up. And I think this New York Knicks team could be a setup to get jammed up. And now well, everybody mad you, at me you, like I hate the you Knicks. Know why, you know why, you know why I, I, I do hear what you're saying, but this is why I disagree. Because there's two players that are not playing that on any team that they go to, they start. Who's that? OG Ananobi mm -hmm. and Julius Randle. Julius so, Randle didn't always start. No, but any he team it. they go to right now, they are a starter in those two. So they're actually playing without two starters. Jalen Brunson, when you were talking about the Atlanta Hawks team and those Portland Trail, those guys could only start on that team. True. That's the only difference. I hear what you're saying, but they, you're right. If they make the wrong decisions in the offseason, they're just as close as being a contender as being close to out of the playoffs. And, and I would say that if they make the wrong decision. But do we believe that Julius Randle is the piece that he comes back and he just makes this thing That's, go to the championship? That was going to be my question. Do, do we know that this Knicks team works like that? Do we still see the Jalen Brunson version with Julius Randle back, does he buy in? I, I think that's the big question. Like, the but question, if he doesn't, he if he buy doesn't in. buy in, he's a great, valuable piece for someone else that you can still attract something. But we're talking about with the Knicks, though. <laughs> yeah, but right? I'm saying but that's a. But but let me ask that, that we look at tonight. We're looking okay. way down oh, the road. Oh, when oh. he comes back and he plays with fluke, how about right. how? <laughs> yeah, 50, 50 and thirty-two fluke, and and you're wondering why. And while anyone who knows ball knows how wrong he is and it made me think about the teams that were actually flukes in all the players throughout NBA history. And while the team that made it to the conference finals, the Indiana Pacers, are one of those teams. Number one, the 2023-24 Indiana Pacers. For this team, I feel like the way they have reached the conference finals has been a fluke, and it starts in the round one, where they beat the Bucks in six games pretty convincingly. But if you add context, then you would see that Giannis Antetokounmpo, who is a top five player in the NBA, did not play in this series, along with Damian Lillard only playing in four games. So in this series alone, you had a top five player and a top 35 player missing games, and the Pacers still went six games with them. But then you move on to the next series where they would play the New York Knicks, where they would lose in the first two games, but in game one, Mitchell Robinson would end up needing season ending ankle surgery, which is a huge blow. And to the Knicks, who were already missing an all-NBA player, Julius Randle, who was also out for the season. But in the fourth quarter of Game 2, OG Ananobi would pull his hamstring and would go down to miss the rest of the series, which would go to 7. But it would get worse, because in Game 6, Josh Hart would pull an abdomen muscle, and the Pacers would go on to win Game, win game 6 and force a Game 7, where J Jalen Brunson, the leading scorer in the playoffs, would break his hand in the third quarter. So the Knicks would end up being without Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, OG Ananobi, Mitchell Robinson, and Bojan Bogdanovic, and Josh Hart was playing with an ab strain, and the Pacers still went 7. For the next season, the Pacers are still going to be a good team, but if they run it back with the team they w had this year, I feel like they won't make it out the first round. Number 2, the 2020-2021 Atlanta Hawks. The 2020-2021 Atlanta Hawks is probably the first team that comes to mind when you think of recent fluke teams because in the moment, this team looked like they were the future of the league and they would make the conference finals with such a young team. It looked bright for the Hawks, but that light went out quickly. They would play the Knicks in the first round of the playoffs and dismantle them, turning Trey Young into a superstar in the process. But looking back at it, that Knicks team was trash and they would go on to face the Philadelphia 76ers and win in seven, completely ending the Ben Simmons era and pretty much ruining his career. But they would run it into the eventual champions, the Milwaukee Bucks, where Trey Young would get injured and they would lose in six. 
and they would not get out of the first round in back-to-back seasons, and they would miss the playoffs entirely this season. And I feel like this happens because of the lack of progression and the young players that they had on the roster. DeAndre Hunter never really improved along with Anyake Okongwu, and they would make they would trade Cam Reddish and Kevin Herter while Trae Young di- uh, digressed a little bit, but they won the number one pick this year, so maybe they can make a comeback. Now I'd like to go over some players that had fluke seasons where they were really good or even a great for a season, but the next season they fell off hard and never got back to producing that great season that they had. A perfect example is 2011-2012 Jeremy Lin. Although this wasn't a full season of greatness, it's a great example of a fluke for 26 games. Jeremy Lin would average 20 points and 8 assists and 2 steals on good shooting. But he would get injured to end the season, and he would never average this again. The closest he got was in 2016, where he averaged 4 points and 5 assists with 1 steal. But that was only for 37 games due to injury. Dana Bajos had a solid 14-year NBA career, where he averaged 10 points and 3 assists. But if you looked at his stats year by year, you would notice an outlier year. In the 1994-95 season, Dana averaged 20 points and 8 assists, even though the year before that, he averaged just 13 points and 5 rebounds per game. The 94-95 season would be his only all-star appearance and he would also win the most improved player award. The same year, but the very next year, he would only average 13 points and you'd see a steady decline until he retired in 2003-2004. Michael Adams is another player who had a fluke year. Adams would have a very good 11-year career where he would be a one-time all-star in the 91-92 season and the weird part is that wasn't even his fluke season. The The first four years of Adams' career he would improve his stats each year until until year five, where he would where his production would take a slight hit and drop from 18 points a game to 15. But the very next year, he would increase his scoring by 11 points per game and go from averaging 15 and a half points to averaging 26 and a half points per game, which would be by far be a career high. The crazy part is he wasn't even an All Star that year, and he came eighth place for the most improved award. The next year, he would only average 18 points per game, but this year, he would make the All-Star team. You would see see a steady decline, and he would end up retiring in 1996, only averaging 5 points per game. The last fluke season in the video would be an active player, and one who could prove in just a couple seasons ago wasn't a fluke, and that player is Mikel Bridges. Mikel Bridges' fluke season is the 2022-2023 season, specifically where he was traded to the Nets, where he would average just over 26 points per game. His previous best was 14. I believe that was a fluke season because I don't believe he will ever average more than that or even get remotely close to that again. The main factor in his scoring being so high changed from a 3 and D role player to a number one option on a playoff team. Now with the Nets going to a, into a rebuild mode and probably looking at a trade Mikel for some draft capital, his role will likely change again where he becomes more of a third option type player because this season showed that he can't be a number one option. He would only average 19 points on okay efficiency while leading the Nets to a 30 and 52 record. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.